Hi, this is Shamal Zahir with the Mitake Design Series. We're about one week after the Design Summit, and with me today I've got Sean. Sean, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Sean McGinnis. I work for Dell Storage in the Eden Prairie office of uh, Minnesota, right outside Minneapolis. Um, I was part of the original team of Compellent Technologies. Uh, we were acquired by Dell a few years ago now. Um, and, you know, been spending the last 10 plus years uh, working with storage, integrating with different uh, different applications, creating different ways to create and delete volumes, and uh, and uh, OpenStack uh, was was one of the, the projects that I got involved in, and and really enjoyed, really liked, and had the opportunity to to spend some more time on it and make it one of my primary focuses, and and been having a great time since. Awesome. So you're the Cinder project team lead. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Cinder does? Sure. The, the Cinder project is the block storage service within OpenStack. In a typical OpenStack deployment, you, you wouldn't necessarily need Cinder. You could have just your compute nodes running um, and, and uh, virtual machine storage just consuming local storage on the on the compute host. Uh, Cinder provides an external block uh, persistent storage so that uh, even when you, you delete your virtual machine, you, know, you could spin up a new one, attach the same volume, and, and have that data stick around. And also use different backends for that storage. Rather than being local on the compute node, uh, it can be on um, you know, your, your uh, SAN array, it can be on an NFS share, uh, you can use Ceph, things like that. In the design summit that just happened in Tokyo, what were some of the hot topics that your team discussed and what were the decisions that were reached? There was a lot of discussion about what Cinder should actually be doing. Um, you know, there's there's been different thoughts on that, whether Cinder should really um, embrace the, the cloud-centric thinking of, of uh, being a, um, I guess, more of a, a, a commodity block storage service uh, where it really doesn't matter what kind of storage you have on the back end. Um, on the other hand, there's there's a lot of interest in, in taking advantage of features from uh, you know, more expensive SAM arrays, uh, especially, I, I, as, as we go into more of the enterprise environments, um, you know, I, I think for a long time we did had a great focus on being more of a general, you know, public cloud kind of platform. Um, but to really be a ubiquitous cloud platform, I think we we need to go all the way from that public cloud to a private on-premise deployment, and that gets you into the the enterprise environment, and those enterprise customers. Uh, usually have an existing storage infrastructure in place, and they've spent a lot of money on it, and and they have systems that kind of have some advanced features that you, know, you can't just get with with a direct attached storage, um, things like data tiering and deduplication and encryption. Um, so one of the big topics was how can we balance that? How can we address the general purpose need of block storage? as well as the needs of these enterprise customers that want to use OpenStack, but don't want to lose out on some of the value that they've invested in. Uh, another theme was just uh, kind of the unfinished business that we have in the project. You know, we're a fairly mature project now. We've been, Cinder's been around for several releases now, and um, there there have been different initiatives that have come and gone, and at, at times, um, you know, we would move on to other higher priority things that came up, maybe before we were quite finished with what what was the the previous focus. Um, so we have some things that that weren't quite fully taken all the way as far as they should be. Um, things like uh, things like our object inheritance for our drivers. It's something that an end user really doesn't know or should care about, really. Um, but it is something that uh, does limit us to a degree in how quickly we can 
move forward with new features and, and how safe we feel in making changes that we're not going to break something. Uh, so, so one of the themes that, that I see is, is getting back, cleaning up some things, um, picking up some things again and, and finishing them uh, and, and expanding on things like our functional testing and our quality of our third-party CI uh, to make sure that the, the code is, is really solid and is in a good state that we're able to keep adding new functionality and, and moving the project forward and being able to keep meeting the needs of the users without getting too uh, too caught up in, in problems that we've caused for ourselves. Given the focus on going back and revisiting things, how would you say it's a distribution or what are the top three priorities, if you will, for Mitoffi? Well, I think one of the big things, just because it, it, it kind of came in really at the end of Liberty, is support for replication. There was an implementation of replication in Cinder previously. Uh, the problem was uh, there was a lot of great work done, so I, I don't want to uh, downplay that implementation and all, but it was uh, implemented by a single vendor at the time. Um, and really, once other vendors tried to start implementing it, we found that that it wasn't quite designed flexible enough to uh, to to work with the various capabilities of different storage arrays. Um, so because of that, we we called Replication V2, the second version of of our replication support where to start with, we try to scale it back a little bit and not do too much at once until we, we kind of understand what other arrays, other storage devices are, are capable of doing first um, before we get into some of the more advanced functionality. Uh, so at the very end of Liberty, we approved the spec for implementing Replication V2, but it, there, was a, there was a lot of back and forth on it, and we really weren't able to do much until the end of the um, the end of the cycle. So um, we plan on implementing that in a few drivers now um, and get support for, for a few different storage devices before we, we start adding additional functionality on top. The other thing that we, we need to address is um, our API support. Uh, so we had a V1 API. We implemented V2. Uh, and we deprecated the V1 API for a few releases now and tried to go and actually remove that support. We weren't able to do that uh, because we found there, there's still a lot of clients using the V1 API. Uh, so that, that caused a lot of discussion of how we can move forward with uh, being able to add new capabilities without being uh, locked into supporting that API forever. Uh, so there's luckily for us as, as the Cinder project, there, there's this has been run into in other projects and um, there's been a lot of discussion around API microversioning. So the idea there is that the clients can negotiate with the server um, for a specific version of the API and, um, and allow the, the server to support multiple versions of the API and, and um, add new functionality, change the API, uh, but still support an older version for clients that, that don't have the latest and greatest. Uh, so that, that's being worked on right now. Um, and it's, we're hoping that it addresses a lot of our concerns and um, a lot of the restrictions we have right now and, and allow us to move forward um, without being too locked in uh, by never being able to change what gets implemented. The other top priority is our ability to, to ensure that we have good quality code, good functioning code, uh, by continuing to focus on third-party CI, making sure that the results that we get from the various vendor CIs um, let us know the quality of that backend um, with Sender and then implementing things like functional testing to be able to increase our test coverage, uh, really make sure that uh, different areas of the code base are getting covered and we have uh, some metrics to back up the quality uh, that, we that we have the confidence that once a user deploys this, they're not going to run into a situation that we haven't 
um, haven't tried or haven't tested against. For the listeners, what we've been trying to do is try to use the concept of fees, whether it's scalability, resiliency, manageability, modularity, and interoperability to help connect the dots between the work being done in projects uh, and the direction the projects are heading. So what would you say are the key, what is the key theme or themes from Cinder and Mipaka? One of the themes is interoperability. The API macro version work that's being done is kind of to that end of being able to work with different versions of clients, different versions of services, um, without having to be kind of in lockstep and make sure that everyone's on the exact same version for things to work the way we expect them to. We're also looking at availability. Uh, one area I haven't discussed yet is there's a lot of discussion around high availability and active-active deployments of the sender volume service. This is the service that, that handles the um, controlling the storage backend. Uh, there's some ways you can get that now, but it's not really supported in Cinder. Um, there's some gotchas. We want to work through those issues and make sure that we can support Cinder in a high availability, active-active environment, allow uh, users to scale it out and have the availability um, they need so that uh, one failure within their environment doesn't cause end users of their cloud services to be locked out from provisioning new storage. And we look forward to the amazing things that Cinder will be delivering in the Thanks again for your time. Thank you.